Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to a Parallel Project Training podcast on resources. Hey. The thing that project managers fight about the most. Yes. It's our third go at this one. It is. <laughs> well, you might never hear this because you might hear us saying this is our fourth go <laughs> or our fifth go. <laughs> right, so we, we got the APM body of knowledge out because yes, it, uh, it's changed. And we didn't really understand it to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> the, the old one. <laughs> we've, just, we've just sat and written our version of it. Yeah. So, which, is good, um, which is good enough, folks. Don't forget, by the way. It's all right. So um, what it says in here is the resources needed to deliver projects, programs, portfolios are people, machinery, materials, technology, property, and anything else required to deliver the work. And those resources may be obtained internally or from the host. Um, being or from, organization, yes. Internally from the host organization or procured externally. Well, that's all you need then, uh, done. Yes, we could just say a little bit more about what those different categories are. So the first one was people. So that's all of the human resources, really, that you yes, need. Yes, all the all the lumpers. All the different... Yeah, well, quite often those get broken down into different groups, different classifications. So you might have designers and you might have mm, right. testers and you might have... Um, awkward ones and non-awkward ones. <laughs> analysts and you might have coders, you know. But you, you usually don't identify... You put people into families, resource families, resource groups. And then um, the other types of resources are machinery. Plant and machinery. Plant and machinery. Cranes, Cranes. scaffolding. And the key thing about those is they generally leave the um, project at the end. So they're not consumed by the project. They are... That's right. They are... As, yeah, that's right. As opposed to materials, which are generally consumed for the purpose of producing right. the product. That's right. So steel, bricks... Um, I was trying to think of an IT example of what you consume. <laughs> Electricity. <laughs> you don't have materials in. Well, floppy disks. Floppy di- No, they're consumable. <laughs> yeah. Materials. Well, if you, I suppose if, you, if, you, if you're delivering a, I don't know, data centre or something, it'll be the yes, power all supplies the, all and the right. false flooring. That's and right, the all the materials. Halon, and, yes. oh, no, they can't use halon, but yes. the gas systems. and yes. whatever. Yeah. So plant and machinery would help you build it. Materials are the things that you produce that you leave that you, behind. You leave behind. They hand over, basically. That's to right. The, okay, to the, I've got you. Yeah. To the yeah file. Okay. And then this this funny uh, area called technology, mm. and we think that is the underlying technology, the IPR, the the know how. Mm. So the modelling software or the IPR that you use to convert the materials into the products. The sort of knowledge, isn't it? It is the knowledge. But, so it, but, but it's not just the it's vested people. in it's vested in the organisation that you so you might have a model for doing something, you might have a patent for a particular process. That's right. That you can deploy. You might that's own. Right. Yeah, that's right. I'm with you. Okay. So I might have the model for, um, the way. Or you might have to buy it in. You yes, might have to license might, it. That's right. That's you might right. have to license the use of some hosting technology. Yes, or some some website designer or, or something or logo or, or something logo, like that. that's yeah. right that's right so but you need that um, technology in order for your to convert the the input materials to the final product that you're going to that's right deliver to the I've got you. so traffic control system mm. the algorithm for you know working out the mm. the safe distances between mm. And the way of coding methods, actually. So mm. the methodology of delivering projects is a, as a, a good bit of technology. Yes, I suppose you could license. I mean, if you if you wanted to license a method. Shaft method or whatever it's called. Shaft. <laughs> yes, whatever your company's method is called. <laughs> what you choose to do to your clients is your business. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and then you get property. Property, so that's, that's space for people to work in. Port cabin. Yes. I think property could, all, could property also include... Um, well, I see that as intellectual property, actually, but... As what? You're differentiating between that and intellectual property. No, I... You're talking about physical, pro- physical space yes, rather than... Yes, that's right, So I you're am. using the term property to mean... Physical space. Facilities. Yes. And and those might be converted by the project and delivered to the project. Hmm. But the, some of them might be incidental, like porter cabins. Hmm. But you might also need a, a an old tatty um, office block... That you take in, and then you produce mm. a nice shiny new refurbished mm. office block as the output. 
Mm. So um, I think these are quite broad categories. And then the last one, they've got anything else required to deliver the project, which isn't really going to... It doesn't help much. doesn't help much. No. So can we think of anything pregnant, else? Pregnant pools. We'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's five. That's five. So the question is going to be describe five types of category of resource. Yes. So we've got people, plant and machinery, materials, technology, and property. Yes. And the types of resource are internal, internal. and external. Yeah, I, I do am an hour about direct and indirect still, but... I think that's more cost modelling. Yeah, okay. So if you're building at a price, the cost breakdown has got your direct labour, indirect labour. Yes, um, okay. Profit, overhead, risk. Okay. So so the parallel parallel way for the, yes. this, this answer then is those five. Yes. And all of them can be direct, i.e. we get them from the host organisation. Yes. Like we've already owned it or we buy it in. Yes. So we buy it in through some sort of procurement Internal process. Internal or externally, yes. Yes. Yeah. So an example might be we have our own quantity surveyors. Yes. Um, but we might hire in an estimator. Yes, that's right. And the one's key, internal, one's external. Uh, and I think the key difference between them, the reason why the APM's pulled it out is once you get to programmes and portfolios, then the internal resources are usually more constrained than external resources. Hmm. Okay. And, and so when you want to mop that out, you... Yeah, good. You need to think about that. And then the next bit is about how those resources are applied to scheduling. So that's quite... I think we discussed that in the last podcast. No, didn't we? we didn't. We we'd sort of talked a little bit about um, the resource histograms, but we didn't yes. talk about this bit about resource levelling and smoothing. Okay. Okay, so, so inevitably when you work out how many resources you need to do a project, you find you've got a gap and don't have enough. Mm. And so, also, it's not a good idea to have big gaps... In people's work di- diaries. Well, in your project diary. Yes. Because you might have a team of half a dozen people working together for six months and then you need, because your plan doesn't need them for two weeks, they all disappear. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully they'll come back again, but of course they don't. So it's better to... Big advantage of the matrix. Smooth it out a bit. Big really. advantage of the matrix. Well, that is because, yeah, I mean, it all works on the basis that you only use the resources when you need them. Yes. And you get rid of them when you don't. Yes. So, I mean, but that the consequences of that is that you can end up with peaks and troughs. Yes. And peaks aren't a good idea and troughs aren't a good idea. Yes, that's so you, right. So smoothing is clues in the title. Yes. You're smoothing it all out. Yes. Like a tube of toothpaste. So the strategies we can adopt are smoothing and levelling. Mm. Smoothing is just smoothing peaks and troughs out. And the idea Within is you would available. N- yes. So the principle is you do that anyway. Yes. You'd normally smooth it all out. Yes. Um, but you rely on, on float. Yes. Because you're probably going to make some non-critical tasks a bit longer mm-hmm. at the expense of some others, right? And there might come a point where you can't smooth anymore. Uh-huh. So people talk about smoothing as being smoothing within the end date. Yes. And levelling where you might move the end date. Yes. But in actual fact, they're just two variations of the same thing because you smooth until you can't smooth anymore, then yes. you level. Yes, if you have and to. Leveling, the implication of that is the end date moves. Yes. So, I mean, by now you've already bought the book, so go and have a look at the diagrams in the book because they're actually how they work. far better described than we can do. <laughs> on you know, Because we're waving our arms around and going we smoothing and leveling. making making diagrams of tubes of toothpaste and things. So you need to kind of go and read the book. But... <laughs> The principle of smoothing and levelling are the two kind of resource scheduling techniques. Yes. Now, there is sort of mutterings about other techniques for resource management. Management. Oh, there. What, like yeah. hiring more people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> or, well, you could hire more people or you could get other people so to do the, the work so or you could you, de-scope your project. You, you, should, you should be familiar with things like splitting tasks and oh, stuff okay. like that. Yes, you can stop split, tasks, yes. Splitting tasks means that you... Um, you stop one and start another. And the, the 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 principle was always that splitting tasks wasn't a good idea yes. because you have demobilisation. Yes. But if you think about it, nearly every task split because you have weekends. Yes. So, yes. and you know the problems of splitting tasks on a Friday afternoon, everyone disappears at four o'clock and doesn't come back till 10 o'clock Monday morning. And then they spend all morning talking about the football or something. So you do have overheads associated yes. with that. But the other thing about resource levelling and smoothing and resource management is you might decide to de-scope it. If you run out of people... That's right. That's what normally happens. You might just say, well, we'll cut the suit to fit the cloth. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we won't do that anymore because we haven't got enough people or we haven't yes. got enough money or something. Yeah. Or you might outsource it. You might say, well, this is a big resource problem. Yeah, I mean, that's right. So you, that's can, you can sort of increase the resource pool through other, through other, through other means, like overtime and 
shift working and or weekend can, working yes, and things like right. that. Or you can get the graduate to do it. Yeah, get the graduate. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Yes. Bog off. But, yes. but you recognise that actually it's going to take longer. But yes. Know, so there are lots and lots of um, management techniques rather than technical techniques. I think smoothing and levelling is a technical, a planning technique. It, yes, that's right, it's a planning technique. Whereas yeah. there are lots and lots of management techniques to, to cope yeah, with results. Yeah. And splitting tasks is a... Is a, is a Scheduling technique. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, I mean, you could also, the other thing you can do with resource management is to violate the dependencies. And do things... So you can do them out of order. Yes, that's right. So you do something while you've got someone around, even though it's not scheduled to be done yet. That's right. So you could look at sort changing of the changing, the, changing the plan, but they yes. might increase the risk or something. Or you could delay something. So, you know, you could say, well, let's not do it now. Let's change mm-hmm. the dependencies mm-hmm. and move it back in the schedule when we know we've got the people around. But it might just mean that you end up, typically what happens is you end up sort of um, designing and building the software at the same time, <laughs> which is not a good idea, just because you've got time constraints and stuff. Yeah. Very good. It's all right. Very good overview of resource management. Good. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojectstraining.com.